If you feel like when you're running, you're dragging your legs through underneath you very differently to how we see elite runners like Eliud Kipchoge, Mo Farah, etc., move with this flowing, high kicking running style, then let's take a closer look at that and figure out what you could be doing better and how much we need to emulate elite runners or perhaps not. So let's think about this for a moment. Let's think about what we see on TV when we're looking at these elite runners. We're seeing very, very fast runners who are covering a lot of ground with every stride. Their stride length is massive in comparison to the majority of us. It needs to be for them to be able to run that fast. And to cover the ground, they need to create the stride length by picking their foot up underneath them into this kind of short lever position as they're moving through flight phase before they then land underneath a flexing knee, close to underneath a flexing hip. That's really important. The faster you're running, the higher you're going to find yourself picking your feet up. And you probably feel the same when you're running. When you're running around, let's say running at 10 minute miles, your carriage of the foot is going to be much lower than it is when you're doing, say, let's say a sprint up the side of a, of a football pitch or something like that. As you're going through the gears, running faster and faster and faster, naturally, you're going to be picking your feet up that little bit more. It's the same for elites as well. I promise you, if you look at footage of someone like Mo Farah running 10 minute mile pace, he's not running in the same way that we see him when we see him running on TV on the track or out on the roads. Okay, it's all relative to pace and relative more so because pace is to do with stride length and cadence. So your stride length and your cadence dictate how fast you're running. So really the pace determines how long he needs each stride to be and the way in which he covers that ground and makes up that stride length is by picking the foot up that little bit more. Now for someone like Mo, I'm using Mo as an example, really we're saying kind of insert elite runner name here. We're thinking not just that he's consciously thinking about picking his foot up into this heel lift type position. A lot of that is elastic recoil. So if we think about the way in which as an elite runner is moving, moving forwards, they've got a lot of range of motion at the hip into extension. They're using a lot of range into extension with a good strong push off. They're storing a lot of energy through hip flexors in particular. In this stretch, this lengthen position through those hip flexors, from here, as the foot leaves the ground, a lot of that recoil is going to be passively helping the knee move forward into hip flexion as that recoil is released. And as the hip comes forward into flexion here, a lot of the flexion at the knee, so the bend at the knee we see, which brings the heel up towards the butt, is centrifugal force. It's kind of this whip effect. Now, that means that they're not consciously trying to fire their heel up towards their butt. It's not something that they're having to do particularly um, to try and maximize their stride length. It's something which through lots of repetition in training and lots of work at high end speeds, their body has become more and more efficient at doing. So for you and I, do we need perhaps to think about gently starting to pick our foot up underneath us? Well, maybe because we're not gonna get the same degree of recoil as someone moving at a faster pace. So we need to remember that human tissue, particularly things like tendons, tendon tissue, is what we refer to as viscoelastic. So the faster we load those tendons, the more recoil we're gonna get back from those tendons. So if we think about someone like Mo, we're moving through a great range of motion into extension and we're doing it quickly. It means that from a soft tissue point of view, that hip flexor unit is going to give us a lot of recoil. Where for someone like you and I, Let's say if I'm running along at nine minute miles, I'm not gonna get as much recoil. I'm not gonna find that my legs passively swinging through underneath me as effectively and quickly as someone like Mo would do, someone like Elliot Kipchoge would do. Instead, I have to, if I feel that otherwise I'm dragging my leg and my legs feel labored underneath me, I have to think about perhaps using my hamstrings a little bit to pick my foot up underneath my body. Certainly not up to my butt because I'm not sprinting. I'm not, you know, if I'm at nine minute mile pace, I don't need the stride length that would come with this high kicking heel lift. But as I run faster, I might do. But as I'm moving at this fairly steady, easy pace, I just need to make sure I'm lifting my foot up enough so that I can cover the ground and land the foot underneath a flexing knee rather than having this low carriage this dragging leg swinging from underneath me where I end up flicking the leg out in front 
and beginning to overstride. I covered that, in fact, in a recent video where I was talking about how to increase your stride length without overstriding. So if you're interested in learning more about that and improving the quality of that swing leg, check out the video right over here. Okay, hope that helped. I'll speak to you very soon with more tips on running technique and how to stay injury-free while you're running. And I'll see you right then. Bye now.